How's it going everyone? My name's Johnny and today I'm going to be sharing my favorite recipe for making a delicious ginger beer with turmeric, cinnamon and chili. This is a great recipe as it only takes a couple days to get a finished drink and it doesn't require anything like a ginger bug starter and it's a great summer drink that's easy to prepare in big batches, ready for any outdoor gatherings or barbecue parties. I use a ratio as a base for this recipe as it allows me to scale my ginger beer batches to any size or amount of bottles that I want to make. I'll throw the ratio on screen here, but the ratio is for every 1 litre of water I need 100 grams of ginger and 100 grams of sugar. The idea is to make what is essentially a big batch of ginger tea. Starting off by cutting up all my ginger into thin sticks, ideally you can blend the ginger, turmeric and chilli with some of the 4.5 litres of water to really extract all the flavour, but I was filming this late and I didn't want to wake up the rest of the house with the noise of the blender, so I did mine a little differently. I cut up my ginger and turmeric and added it all to a large pot, which I then added my 4.5 litres of water and 400 grams of sugar. Bringing that up to a boil, I also added my cinnamon stick and a small chilli. It may look like a small chilli, but these small chilies pack quite a kick, and this is going to be left overnight to steep, so it should give it a nice little spice to the whole batch. Here I started off using my electric portable stove, but it wasn't powerful enough to bring this big pot up to a boil, so I switched to my portable gas stove, and yes, I know I have a big kitchen stove behind me, but for my videos I always use my portable stove for the sake of easy filming. Anyways, back to the ginger beer. I'm bringing it up to a boil on high heat, then lowering down to a low or medium heat so that it maintains a simmer. I'm covering with a lid to minimize evaporation and leaving to simmer for around 15-20 minutes. 15-20 minutes later, I'm taking the pot off the heat and setting aside, leaving the lid on. This mixture is way too hot at the moment to add the yeast to, so I'm going to leave it overnight to cool down completely to room temperature. You don't need to leave it overnight, just until it cools down, but it does help let the flavor steep into the water and it gives you a more flavorful ginger beer. So it's the next day, and the ginger beer is cooled down completely and I'm ready to move on to bottling. First, I want to explain how I'm going to bottle these. I use beer bottles specifically because they're able to handle the pressure of the natural carbonation that's going to occur in our ginger beer. Now the ginger beer is cooled off completely, I'm going to strain out all the solids from the liquid using a strainer, and then I'm going to do it again using a double layered cheesecloth. You can throw away all the strained solids now as well. I'm taking about a cup's worth of ginger beer and mixing in my yeast. I use wine yeast, and the amount of yeast depends on the brand that you use. For mine, it's about a teaspoon per gallon, so I ended up using a teaspoon for my entire batch. And then adding it back to the main batch of ginger beer, and then mixing it well, and then letting it rest. While the yeast is activating, I'm going to sanitize my beer bottles and bottle caps. I use a brand called Chemsan, which is a no-rinse sanitizer. You can check your local home brewing shops or websites to find no-rinse sanitizers. Just know that sanitizing is a pretty important step to prevent this brew from going bad. I'm making sure to fill my bottles to the top with sanitizer, basically to the point that they overflow. We really want to make sure that everything that comes in contact with the ginger beer is clean. Let the bottles sit in the sanitizer until you're ready to use them. I also put my measuring jug and funnel into the sanitizer as well. Now we're ready to pour our ginger beer into our bowls. Using the funnel and the measuring jug that I've also had sitting in sanitizer, I'm going to fill each bottle up, leaving just over an inch of air at the top of each bottle. Then capping off each bottle with bottle caps that have also been sitting in sanitizer. Now comes the hardest part, waiting. In my kitchen, I found the best result comes from 24 hours at room temperature and then two to three days in the fridge. So that's what I'll do with these ginger beers. And I'm gonna cover them with a tea towel to keep most of the light off them. Okay, so I know I said to wait two to three days after refrigerating, but I couldn't help myself and I opened them a day after refrigerating. This bottle is ice cold, so it shouldn't erupt in a rocket as soon as I open it, but it doesn't mean I'm not gonna take extra precautions. I've got a shallow baking pan and a kitchen towel ready just in case. I'm gonna carefully pop the top off bit by bit to release the pressure slowly. Ah, uh, ah, uh, there we go. Nice, didn't explode. It is overflowing a little bit, but that's okay since we'll only lose a little bit of liquid. You can see the carbonation has gone well, and the colour has changed drastically from the brown tea looking liquid I started off with. The flavour is slightly spicy with the ginger, and leaves a nice warmth from the chilli. However, the turmeric and the cinnamon are a little weaker than I would have liked. Definitely could have extracted more flavour if I blended the ingredients at the beginning, but for now, I'm pretty satisfied with this end product. I'm going to enjoy this while I watch a movie. If you enjoyed this, consider liking this video, sharing, and subscribing, as I have plans to make more just like this. Also go check out my Instagram and TikTok channels in the description below, or search Johnny Kyung-hoo to find me.